Do you have a long list of dreams or to-dos for when you retire? Well, so did I. I recently did a video about my retirement dreams, but in order to get there, I had to let some things go. So I created an anti-bucket list. Here are the things that I had to let go of doing in my retirement. Before I get into those, things that I'm not gonna do when I retired, I have done a couple of collaborative videos with some other YouTubers, and I'll put the link in the bottom, but I recently did my video with a financial planner. It's not the one with the questions, that one's gonna be on my channel, but it was questions that he had for me that could serve his clients. I did a two-part video series with Rich and Robbie over it before it's too late on YouTube, and I'll link that below as well. We've been sick at my house. That's why this video is coming out a little bit later than usual. Having a daughter come home from college, she brought all those germs with her, and then substitute teaching at five different high schools finally caught up with me. So I think we're back on track. So let's talk about my anti-bucket list. Once I settled into retirement, I got a little overwhelmed with all the things I thought that I should be doing or that other people were doing that I thought was part of retirement and everybody just does those things. In order to reduce the overwhelm and come to terms with what I expect or I want out of my retirement, I felt like it would be a good idea to mark some things off the list that are normal or traditional, or you see a lot of people do when they're retired that I'm for sure not gonna do. And I narrowed it down to 10 things. I'm back to my lists. And I'm, the last one is probably, the last couple are probably pretty shocking. Most people would do that, and I'm just not gonna do that. I'm gonna start out, my number one, if you know me and you watched a video where I talked about my story, the first thing that I'm not gonna do in my retirement is get or ride a motorcycle. Now, I love the motorcycle culture and people that do ride motorcycles. I've always been, a fan of that and enjoy the Harley Davidson gear and the fashion and the things that they support and people who ride motorcycles support some tremendous causes. If you're scared of the tattoo biker dude guy image, that is not what it's like in the motorcycle community. But the reason why I'm not going to get a motorcycle or I'm not going to ride a motorcycle is that my little brother was killed in a motorcycle accident. And then six years after that, my dad was killed in a motorcycle accident. So it's pretty obvious why I wouldn't want to ride one. I would support my friends or someone I was dating to have a motorcycle or to ride a motorcycle. I just can't stomach getting on one myself, even though I would love to. The problem is that it's not always the motorcyclist's fault when there's an accident. It's oftentimes somebody else's fault. A deer jumped out in front of my dad, therefore it wasn't necessarily my dad's fault that he had a motorcycle accident. I just don't think that I can get on board with riding a motorcycle. So that's my number one. I just wanted to get that one out of the way because I thought that might come up and that's one of the big retirement dreams I hear a lot of people talk about. Number two, traveling internationally. I traveled internationally 20 some years ago to visit my brother in the military when he was stationed in Germany. So I've been to Germany and then we went to Amsterdam for the weekend of the trip that I was there. And I flew over the Christmas holidays and I loved it. But I don't necessarily feel like there are places that I need to go internationally or I feel like I'm going to miss out on something if I don't go somewhere. Not that I won't take up the opportunity to go if I'm invited or there is a way I could travel internationally. I just, I marked that off because it just wasn't really a huge desire for me. Number three is going on a mission trip. I would prefer to serve in this country, my people or our people are through a church or through an organization here in the United States. So maybe I'm speaking more specifically to a mission trip overseas. Maybe a mission trip here in the United States I would do, but I don't necessarily feel called to do a mission trip. I do feel called to volunteer or serve my community, just not in that way. 
This has come up before, but I don't see myself becoming a recluse or a homebody where I'm just home all the time. A lot of people retire and they retire to their homes and they just enjoy the solitude and the quiet of being at home. And I do love that. I love that more than I thought that I was going to love that, but I don't love it enough that that's all I do and I don't go out and do things or I'm a recluse for a couple of weeks and then go out every now and then to go to the grocery store. I don't see myself just staying in my home all the time and not ever doing anything, but I have enjoyed it a little bit. If you know more about this next one, if you could put your experiences or some things that you've heard in the comments, that would be great. But I don't see myself living in a retirement community. I don't necessarily know what types of communities there are for retired people. I've driven by the buildings that are the hotels or townhouses that say 55 plus, And I always tell my kids when I drive by those, oh, there's going to be my next home that's where you're going to bring your grandkids whenever you guys have kids and you get married and everything and they're just mortified because they don't know what it is either but i do drive by and i see those 55 plus hotel or not hotels i see those 55 plus apartment complexes I'm not saying I'm ruling that out, but the communities where you're in a gated community or a place of just retired people riding around on golf carts, I can't see myself doing that. Never say never. I've stopped thinking about that or planning on that just to free up mental space to figure out where I am going to move once I'm able to move from this house. I do not plan to babysit my grandkids full time. A lot of my friends' parents have raised their grandkids. My aunt raised her grandkids. A lot of the children that went to the schools that I worked in were raised hypothetically by their grandparents. And I just don't see myself doing that full time. Am I going to do it a little bit? Yes, of course. I wish that my mom lived closer and she could have helped me with my kids. But she said from the beginning, she wasn't going to do full time daycare. She wanted to be a grandma. And I feel like that's what I'm going to do as well. Never say never. If my kids get in a bind, of course, I'm going to watch my grandkids. That's just a given. I have a friend right now now that doesn't know how to say no to watching his grandkids. So I get that. But I don't want to plan on spending my retirement or the rest of my years raising kids again after already raising mine unless it's an emergency or something tragic happens. But I kind of marked that off my list. I probably need to tell my kids that though. Running a marathon. I have done some 5Ks and we do, we have done the turkey trot. We haven't been able to do the turkey trot for the last few years because we always go to my mom's. Maybe I should start the turkey trot at my mom's or we could just do one ourselves and have shirts made. I don't ever plan to do a marathon, a half marathon, anything like that. That was a dream of mine years ago when I was healthier, but I think I'll stick to the fi the walking 5Ks and not a marathon. I don't think I'm going to take up gambling now that I'm retired. We live close to casinos and I have been to quite a few casinos over the last probably eight months. I don't like to gamble, that's just not something that I enjoy. Yeah, I'll put $20 in a slot machine here or there. I don't think that gambling or going to casinos on a full-time basis is in my future. I say that when I just made a reservation at one because my daughter's basketball team plays in a tournament and the hotel that they stay in is connected to a casino in Pittsburgh, Kansas. But I don't think I'm going to start gambling with my retirement money. I think I want to keep my money more than I want the chance of losing my money. Before I get to these last two, I put a link to a complimentary retirement planner. It's actually just a digital notebook in the description for you to use to jot down your anti-bucket list or your retirement dreams. I'm working on a full 
retirement journal with prompts and questions and things to think about when you get ready to retire and be a little bit more prepared than I was. I think if you go back and watch some of my videos and especially the interviews that I just did, you'll see that this has been quite an adjustment for me. But if you click the link in the description, it'll take you to a link to download a digital notebook. And this is just to get you used to it in case you would like the plant or the journal that I've created. It's, I don't know how to do a actual journal without it costing a whole lot of money and I feel like the questions and the prompts will be so beneficial when thinking about retirement. So if you want to know how to just do a digital journal, download the complimentary one below. All right, number nine, I am not going to do spa days and get massages. I, so many people like to get massages. I absolutely cannot stand getting a massage. I have tried probably five or six times to go to this, but people have bought me that as gifts over the years and I just haven't enjoyed it. Now, maybe if somebody went with me or I was together with somebody, I would feel less self-conscious and nervous, but I'm not going to go to spas and get massages all the time in my retirement. And that may be shocking to some people. And finally, I am not getting a tattoo. My kids have tried to talk me into getting a tattoo and that they want the three of us to get matching tattoos. I don't have anything against tattoos other than I'm a big wimp. I cannot imagine having some little needling gun give me tattoos. I have no tattoos, so I don't plan to get one, but my kids are really, really begging me to do it. And so many people, when I tell them that they're just do it, just do it. I just, the pain, I can't imagine the pain. Like I said, I'm such a wimp, but I know so many people who have tattoos that have regretted it and I don't have any yet. I mean, that would be a little teeny tiny one if I did one with my kids but I have taken that off the list of things that I'm gonna do in my retirement. If these videos are helpful to you or you do an anti-bucket list, let me know in the comments. And it shows that the majority of you are not subscribed to this channel. And if you subscribe and like this channel, these videos will show up for more people that are getting ready to go on their retirement journey and it might be helpful to them. Thanks and stay tuned for the next video.